Welcome back to my home studio, my broadcast meta metaphysical ministry on a Sunday morning. Welcome you guys to South Florida. Welcome to uh, just this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope this week as I was working on writing for a book that I am uh, going to have published, which is actually my second book. Uh, this one is really about living a psychic life. Okay, now that's a title I've chosen. You know the publishers, they'll probably change it, <laughs> change half my book anyway. But uh, I wanted to remind people how our lives are truly, and as a faculty of life, a psychic life. Our lives as human beings on earth, we are an extension of the universe. I love how in some movies they say, we, we are literally the ingredients of the stars. We are composed of all of the elements, the resonance, the vibration. The, we, are, we are compositions of stardust. Well, it really is true when you think about it. Everything came from uh, 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 exploding stars, all the elements. And so what we understand is also from another perspective, from a metaphysical perspective, a spiritual perspective, we are spiritual beings first. Eternal, we're eternal souls, aren't we? We've always existed. And uh, we are having a temporary, maybe 85 year human experience in a physical form. And so, and because of that, because of that connection to that higher reality, the higher dimensions of life, the higher, yes, those are higher dimensions, the fourth and fifth dimensions and so on. We are an emanation of this universe. Hi, Jennifer Sedman, good to see you in the chat room. And as extensions of this universe, we have inclinations because we're composed of the vibrations or the resonance of the universe. We should be able to feel when the universe or spirit, uh, and when I say spirit, uh, I mean, I'm using a singular term for a collection of different spirits, uh, souls, spirit personalities, spirit people. And so we're, we should be following those inclinations of spirit, of spirits, right? Now, we are responsible for our lives uh, first and foremost. We are personally responsible for our thoughts, our words, our actions, no matter what any spirit tells us. We are responsible for how we not only interpret that, but also deliver it to others or interact with others. And so I just wanted to, uh, to really get into today to talk about spirit inclination or inspiration of spirit, how they affect us in lives. And I want to talk about that from a biblical perspective and a everyday perspective, because I think that many of us kind of take for granted those strange thoughts that we have in our minds or those little nudges that literally is like spiritual nudges. And we, 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 I think, you know, even with these things, you know, the cell phones and the computers and the cameras and all this kind of stuff, we're so distracted by television and life in general. And I think those numb us and even living in homes, the way we live in homes now, we're numbed to nature. We're numbed to a psychic universe because we're so disconnected and we're so we're constantly being drawn to watches like these these Apple watches that that get your attention and make noise or we're drawn to the beautiful stimulation of imagery in television. We're drawn to the imagery in mu movies. We're drawn to the audible sensations of sound coming from uh, CD players and from uh, and from the radio or from uh, earphones and whatnot speakers. We're drawn to the smells of cooking. We're drawn to the smells in department stores, aren't we? They put specific smells, it's a whole science, into shopping malls to get you to buy. It's an externalization of your awareness to keep you distracted to do what they want you to do, meaning the man, the people, right? Other people want to get your attention, so they're, they're constantly putting things out there to stimulate you, your physical senses, to get you to not pay attention to what's on the inside, which is your own inner awareness and your own reality. And your thinking mind, your higher mind, is making a connection on the inside. So that little voice that says, Kevin, you really don't need to spend $200 on a fancy watch that will talk to you and whatever, <laughs> make your morning coffee, 
Actually, it probably could turn on a coffee pot <laughs> now that I think of it. But, you know, we need to go back into that. So let me tell you this, what happened this week. And then we're going to jump into a little bit of biblical scripture because I love to do that. So as I was writing in my book, this week I was writing about mediumship. I was writing about spirit guides. Anything else? I think I started writing on spiritual healing, but but I haven't gotten very far. So those are a couple of the chapters in my book that I'm working on, getting them uh, solidified. And as I was writing, I began to, in the book, of, in my little chapter on mediumship, I began to sense, what was it? Oh, that's what it was. I began to sense symbology as I'm writing about what is mediumship, what does it mean, what is a soul, what is spirit, how do we make contact, what, did the, what, did hap, what happened in ancient times with, with uh, spirit and soul and whatnot. And all of a sudden I began to think, Kevin, you know what? You need to study symbology. Kevin, you should really look at color. I want you to go back and look at color. And I thought, well, that's a weird thought. I have been in sem seminary. It took me five years. It was a four-year program. <laughs> yeah, I guess spirit needed that. And um, I have read books on auras and colors and symbology. I have s trained with teachers who taught those things. But something kept telling me, and I thought, well, I can tell it's a spiritual inclination. I can tell spirit wants me to look into it. I think I know a lot about it. I use it in my public, uh, when I do public message, message work on a stage or over a, a live stream like this, I use symbology and I use colors. And I thought, interesting thought. Okay, I'll look at that in a few days. I got things to do because Kevin's busy. <laughs> I may not have a job, but I am so busy with trying to build my virtual ministry. So what I noticed was Yesterday, as I was going through, I was actually doing some house cleaning, and I had a bunch of uh, over 200 cassette tapes from my church's history, and I was trying to go through them because we'd previously recorded a bunch of them, digitized them, and I was double-checking to make sure they were, uh, they, you know, what were the topics, who were the mediums or the ministers who spoke, and, and what was the material in the cassette tapes, and did I have it recorded by my assistant? Well... Wouldn't you know, I started noticing uh, out, there were there must have been over 20 cassette tapes on what symbology and color, different tapes on colors, colors of the aura, implications, spirit symbols and signs, symbology, psychic symbology. So all these things kept pointing back to study symbology, study, study colors. And I thought, okay, I need to do that. Maybe I need to put together a class and actually teach that. And it probably would make sense. <laughs> anyway, so those are inclinations of spirit. Those are inspired moments or thoughts. Spirit, My spirit guides are trying to get me to focus on that for some reason. So that is a perfect example of how I listen to that inner voice. I listen. Now, if I'm distracted, if I had been sitting there listening to uh, Lady Gaga uh, or Oprah Winfrey on television, and uh, while I'm trying to write that book, write that chapter in my book, I would have been so distracted, which is why I always tell my students, don't listen to music when you meditate. <laughs> it will distract you. It actually pulls me out of my meditation. I cannot have music or a, a person guiding me through a forest to an ancient castle in the mountains. I can't do that. It, it literally pulls me and makes me too conscious, too aware. I need to be spiritually aware. I need to be in the seance room of my inner mind, my inner, my inner temple. So when I close my eyes and when I sit in a darkened room and I turn off the music and I blow out the candle and I sit with my breath, and I just feel my very nature. I am attuning with my higher power, my higher self. I am attuning to the world of spirit. And I'm beginning to resonate with the mind of spirit, meaning the spiritual minds of all of those souls that stand in support of me. It could be Archangel Michael. It could be Archangel Raphael. If those are who I speak to regularly, I know they're around me always. So I could be my spiritual guides, my gatekeeper, Jacob. It could be my joy guide, Lilac. It could be my doctor of philosophy, Dr. Reed. So I'm always trying to listen and notice who's around me. Who has something to say to me? Thank you. I can feel that. 
oh, I hadn't, where did that thought come from? You know what? And if, if thoughts suddenly pop into your head that you weren't thinking of, clearly it didn't come from you. Spirit inspires you to think of things or to feel things or to ponder things or to remember life memories for a reason. If you weren't, if you were engrossed in something else and suddenly someone pops into your mind, there is a reason. Spirit wanted you to have that awareness. In one of my first lessons, which was an amazing lesson that my spiritual teachers taught me, was any time you thought of, suddenly thought of a dear friend, co-worker, maybe a neighbor, former lover, one of your exes from Texas. <laughs> you know, and if you suddenly think of them, pick up the phone and call them. And, and if you're on good speaking terms with them, hopefully you just would say, well, you know what? You are on my mind. I'm just thinking about you today. How you doing? And that's all you have to do. You don't even have to tell them that, oh, I'm having a psychic moment. I'm having spirit inspiration and I'm honoring that because Reverend Kevin told me to. You don't need to tell them that. They don't need to know all that. Just see what happens. Let me tell you, you will be shocked how many times you, you literally cannot imagine how many times I had picked up the phone back when I first started. I would page people to call me. Uh, that dates me. And now we can text people, call people, email people. We, you in the old days, I would write letters to people and tell them, you know what? On on uh, on back on Tuesday, the June third, I was thinking of you, and this popped into my mind. How you doing? And they would write back, or they'd call back and say, "That's so crazy." Because that afternoon, I was at a party and I was telling somebody about you and trying. I wanted I wanted them to find you, or I was telling them an amazing story that about something we did together. And so that started to confirm to me that spirit was working with me, nudging me, guiding me. And it showed me, it really showed me what I was capable of doing. I was capable of unfolding my spiritual or my psychic, my intuitive potentials, my gifts of the spirit. Now, with that word being said, gifts of the spirit, let's jump into this. This is the George Lamza version of the Bible, the Holy Bible. And it's called the George Lamza translation because Dr. George Lamza, who spoke ancient Aramaic, the language of the Bible, the original scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls were actually written in Aramaic. Now, he grew up in an Aramaic Peshitta village. He spoke the ancient language. He knew all of the strange uh, idioms and the, and the, and, and the culturally... Uh, uh, not sensitive, but the culturally appropriate terminology and, and the symbols. And why, why would they talk about a man being swallowed by a fish? Well, hello, because even today in modern, uh, modern Aramaic speaking communities, they always say, you know what? I'm battling a fish, but we say, you know what? I'm in a pickle. So in 2000 years, can you see, can you imagine people in 2000 years, you know, we're going to be a whole nother species by then, but that's another lecture. But in 2000 years, and they're looking back into our archives, our digital archives, and they're going to see this sermon and this handsome young man. And they're going to say, why was he talking about fish and pickles? Because we say we're in a pickle, but in the Aramaic community, they say that I'm fighting a fish. Well, if the if the ancient translators of the 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 ancient languages into their their culture's language, which would, would have been Greek or uh, uh, Hebrew or, uh, you know, and then later on into English, you know, can you imagine when they read uh, Jonah was swallowed by a fish? Uh, right. A great fish, a big fish. Well, the translators would have said he was swallowed by a whale. But that is totally inaccurate. And that's what I love about the George Lamza translation of the Bible is that actually, in our opinion, within the United Metaphysical Churches, we believe it's the most accurate version of the Bible. The translation uh, is much more accurate than any other version. And there's uh, over 600 versions of the Bible translations. And it's incredibly accurate. But let's but let's get to the meat of today. And that's the gifts of the spirit. Right now. Growing up, you always heard people would say, especially in the book of Leviticus and other places in the Bible, well, the Bible was not written by God. The Bible is a book of inspiration, a book is actually books, plural, 66 books to be exact, interesting number. And uh, it was, it's a, it's a collection of letters and books that were inspired by God or by spirit. And so they were written by Prophets, mediums, right? Leaders, spiritual leaders. 
And so the Bible is 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 not a book written by God, but written by man. And so, and unfortunately, governments and leaders have add, conveniently added some things to uh, to control the people and to not allow them to put forward their uh, their their psychic potentials. Right? They wanted the people to go to the priest or to the rabbi, to the spiritual leaders, to access the divine power of God. So they took control. And, uh, and control the people with a lot of the scriptures, unfortunately. But there's still some beautiful things in there. And I want you to understand this. In the Bible's book of, where is this? 1 Corinthians, there you are, chapter 12, verses 4 through eh, about 12. I want you to listen to these words because these are really amazing. It says this about gifts of the Spirit. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but there is only one Spirit. And there are diversities of ministries, but there is only one Lord, meaning God. And there are diversities of powers, okay? But it is the one God who works in all things, in all men and women. And, uh, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man as help to him. So what that's saying is all manifestations of Spirit, all spiritual potentials, are given to every human being equally. Okay? For the one for to one is given by the spirit, meaning God, the word of wisdom, right? That's a divine wisdom. To another the word of knowledge, clear cognizance, clear no, psychic knowing. It's like a direct download. And it's given by the same spirit. To another the uh, to another is given faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, right? Foretelling what's to come in a person's life uh, or what's taking place in their life. To another the, uh, the means to distinguish the true spirit. In other words, discernment of spirit personalities, a.k.a. modern day mediumship. To another, different languages. In other words, speaking in tongues. To another, the interpretation of those tongues, languages. Okay? But all of these gifts are wrought by the one and the same Spirit, dividing to every one equally. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members are of the body, meaning the body of Christ or the Christ consciousness, uh, and it's saying even though they are many, they are one body, and so is the Christ. In other words, the Christ consciousness. So these gifts of spirit are our gifts of leadership, our gift of song, if we're singers, or gift of music, if we're musicians, gift of leadership, gift of ministry. This is my gift of ministry. I'm clearly meant to be speaking in front of a camera to, to bring forward a ministry to the people. That is what my soul is inclined to do. And I do that every Sunday. I do it quite often. So whatever your gift is, your gift could be working with abandoned pets or, 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 or abused pets. Your gift could be uh, doing healing prayer work for people at a district. Your, your, your healing, your gifts could be being a parent to a foster child, right? Whatever you're inclined to do, that is your spiritual inclination. That is the true happiness and potential. That is your soul beaming in that moment. That is your gift of spirit. And so build that and use that to serve humanity. Our gifts of spirit are not meant to be used just for ourselves. They're meant to be used to better our lives, right? To recognize spirit is with us in the moment in those, uh, those difficult lessons. But also it's there to, to really to show us uh, uh, ways of serving others and ways to be better ambassadors for spirit and to be able to serve people at large, right? So let me read to you a couple of interesting uh, uh, scriptures. I'm going to jump over to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel was an amazing uh, prophet, aka modern day medium. And that whole chapter is actually a very crazy little chapter because there are so many mystical experiences and there's even, for all my ancient alien fans, there's even a reference to UFOs uh, in there. Uh, and I'll let you find that, okay? That'll be your homework for today from Reverend Kevin. Now, let's jump over to chapter 11 in the book of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is telling people the following in uh, chapter 11, verse 4. Therefore, prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. In other words, you human person. <laughs> and the spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and he said to me, speak. Inspiration. Thus says the Lord God. Thus have you desired 
there was a desire to speak on behalf of God, for I know the inclination of your thought. In other words, spirit is, uh, um, Ezekiel is trying to remind the people that there is spiritual inclination to deliver messages from a higher source. And he's reminding them, God works through you. Do it. Yo, go do it, dude. Right? So let's jump over to another chapter. Okay, so let's jump to the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse, one verse. It's actually verse 7. And this is what uh, is, is the this is interesting because the disciples recognize they're being guided by spirit and they go a completely different direction. Listen. And when the disciples came to the country of Mycenae, they wanted to go from there to Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus permitted them not. Now that's interesting. Whether in the timeline, I cannot tell at this moment where if Jesus was in physical form or spirit form, I have a, 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 I think the way it's written, it is the inclination that Jesus is spirit, the awareness of Jesus was being present with them, and they recognized, you know what, we're not going to Mycenae, we're going to go to the other, the, the, the other city, we're going to go a different direction. So they followed the inclination of spirit. How many of you have ever been driving down the highway and you felt, you know what, I have to get off at this exit, I don't know why, but I just have to take a different road home. And when you did, didn't something amazing happen? Didn't you discover something that just really excited you or benefited you in some way? That is spirit inclination, exactly what the disciples experienced by being guided by the spirit of Jesus. Let's turn to one last chapter as another example of spirit's inclination or inspiration to help us and how we need to start listening to those spirit nudges. In the book of Acts, it says the following, uh, chapter 16, verse 7. Oh, well, I just read that to you. Let's jump over to, did I skip it? Oh, here it is, the book of Luke. So the prophet, uh, the apostle, the disciple called Luke, right, uh, who was actually a medium, right, that's a prophet, he said this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because of this. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim release to the captives and sight to the blind to strengthen and forgive those who are bruised. In other words, to present spiritual ministry, to allow the word of spirit to flow through him, to heal, to uplift, to, to release the bonds. Actually, they're probably mental and emotional bonds, not literal bonds of shackles of slavery, but just the own, I mean, don't we just hold ourselves back so often? That's the captivity he's speaking about. And then he also talks about sight to the blind. Yes, he definitely had the potential to heal people. Uh, the disciples actually healed people of blindness. However, there's also a spiritual metaphysical interpretation to restoring sight to the blind. It's removing the darkness of ignorance, uh, human ignorance in the mind, and restoring spiritual sight and understanding of, uh, of spirit around them. So he's talking about recognizing in situations that he is guided by spirit to serve people in many different ways. Uh, and I just think that's amazing because so many times you guys probably do not recognize Jesus chose, let's say this, the gifts of spirit, they were not all inclusive to Jesus, the Christed one, right? Brother Jesus. Jesus is not my savior. I don't teach the savior principle because spirit has told me it, it's not true. Meaning Jesus constantly called himself son of man. He never once called himself son of God, but humanity made him son of God. They called him a son of God. And Jesus never once said that in any scripture will you find that. Jesus said, I am son of man. I'm a human being just like you. You and I are the same. I am your brother. Don't worship me. Worship God. And the same father that I pray that I worship is who works through you. And Jesus said, the, the gifts, the spiritual gifts that I demonstrate, you can do them too, and you will do them better than me. You have that potential. Do you not recognize you are God in expression? You are all gods. And that's what Jesus said, trying to remind us that Jesus was not above us, but he was there to support us and to guide us, to be a loving light example. Jesus brought the vibration of love into the world. He was not there to lay down the law. Right, but to remind us of the power that we hold, the divine soul essence that we are, 
the God in human form that we are. We are literally God's in hands, God's hands, feet, words, lips, everything on earth. So what's interesting is that Jesus chose his human disciples not for their money, not for the titles, not for the families they came from or how much land they had or what company they worked for or uh, what their social media platform, how many followers they had. Jesus chose average everyday human beings because of their spiritual potential to help his ministry. How did he do that? He paid attention to the inclinations in his soul being drawn to their souls. In other words, he recognized the gifts of spirit that were just waiting to explode and come forward in each of them. He recognized they were all mediums. They were all psychics waiting to come forth in a strong way. And that's why he chose them. Did you know that? And so that's just beautiful to me because it just remind, it just goes to show Jesus actually trained all of his disciples to be great healers great psychics, great prophets to prophesy, to, to, to minister to the people, to uplift and inspire people, maybe to speak in tongues. I don't, I don't know about that, but I would assume so because a lot of them did, a lot of the people in the times. But Jesus also told them, taught them how to be exorcists, to how to cast out uh, uh, d these dark souls, chaotic souls, and how to restore the, the mind and the emotional and spiritual body of the person back to a state of wholeness. So if Jesus taught human beings how to do that, Jesus had no problem with psychic gifts, intuitive gifts, divine wisdom being used, these gifts of the Spirit. And I want to encourage you, I'm a minister who encourages you to unfold your gifts of Spirit, to use them not just for yourself, to better your life, to find great opportunities, but in service to humanity. We are ambassadors for spirit in human form. <clears throat> and this is how the light needs to be brought stronger to this planet to create a web, a beautiful network of light around the planet through using our gifts to not only build our communities and serve our communities, but literally to connect to other communities in the world and create this beautiful golden blanket of support and metaphysical truth and teaching and spiritualism around the world. How beautiful. I just want to say, your gifts of spirit will help you to recognize in those dark cloud moments in your life that those are spiritual lessons waiting in disguise to be discovered. That's your silver lining lesson. The light of God is always present behind those dark clouds of life. And it's your job to use your gifts of spirit in a beautiful, high vibrational way to recognize that there is a lesson in the moment and that there is a truth waiting to be discovered, that there is amazing potential waiting to be served as an ambassador for spirit to all of those spirit has guided into your path. God guided your, 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 the, your enemies, your ex-lovers, even your, your, your spouse, your significant other, guided them into your life for a reason, to learn from, to grow from, evolve from, progress from, to be a part of. You are so precious. Never forget how powerful you are, how important you are. If you drew breath this morning, God has a purpose for you in this world. And the way you find that is you find what makes you happy. What do you just love to do? Do you like rescuing animals, helping foster kids, singing in a church, singing on a stage uh, for nonprofits? Do you love leading communities? Do you love creating beautiful art? Do you love uh, guiding ministries or, or guiding and creating organizations? What's your gift, right? Is it, a, is it a live stream ministry? Just talking and, and just bringing hope to the people. That's a ministry. That is your gift. Find what makes you beam and glow, makes you so happy. And I guarantee you, you'll bring more silver lining into more people's lives than you can imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, from my heart to yours, from our community here in South Florida to yours, much love and much light. And we'll catch you next time during our beautiful Sunday morning spiritual segment, these, delivering these beautiful metaphysical moments for you. I love you, and we'll see you again on the flip side. Bye-bye.